Hello, Yoon Group, and welcome to the training video for how to run a column. Um, first off, you put some cotton in the bottom. Uh, usually, it doesn't go all the way in, so I use some positive pressure, in this case nitrogen, to get it to stick down in the little uh, narrow spot. On top of that, you'll add some sand to create a nice uniform layer. Um, and while this video is meant to be a bit of a guide, uh, there are some things that I do that are less than perfect, so I'll try to point them out when I see them. Um, but for the most part, this is um, a, a decent starting point. Um, so usually I will add some uh, solvent to the top of the sand so that when I add the silica, it does not disturb the surface of the sand. You'll see that when I added the solvent, the sand got a little bit deformed, but it's mostly flat. Um, and then I uh, measure out my silica. I like to do a constant or a known amount of silica just so that I can reproduce the column conditions if I need to. Uh, so I have this little jar that has uh, volume measurements on the side. Uh, for the most cases, I'll use about 50 milligrams, uh, or sorry, 50 grams, sorry, 50 milliliters of silica. Um, and that's usually good if you're isolating anywhere between 10 and 100 milligrams of material. Um, if you have more than that, you'll probably want to use more silica, um, and you can refer to Chris's flash talk about running a column um, to get some more insight into that. So I pour my dry silica into a uh, Erlenmeyer flask, and then I will add some of my mobile phase, which I've already previously uh, determined a decent mobile phase for this uh, uh, isolation. Add enough so that uh, you can make a slurry with the silica, and then you'll add that to the top of your column. Um, I added it a little bit quickly here, um, but you can see that it didn't really disturb the sand layer because um, we had so much solvent above that. So overall, that's pretty good. Um, and then I'll just do a couple more rinses to uh, transfer all of the silica to the top of the column. Um, and then when you're done with that, uh, I apply pressure to the top just to get the solvent level down um, and just rinse down all the silica from the sides of the column. Uh, you'll want to leave a small buffer zone of solvent or mobile phase above the top of the column just so the top of the column doesn't run dry. You'll take your sample, you'll take a uh, slightly more polar usually, um, mixture of solvents than your mobile phase to load it with. Um, in this case, I'm using a solvent system of hexane and ether, and so the what I'm loading it with is a little bit more enriched in ether. Um, uh, but you don't want to go too polar, otherwise you can have some issues, and this is also um, diluted by the buffer zone that you have on the top of the column. Um, you'll transfer it uh, to the top of the column, uh, being careful not to disturb the um, top layer. And then after I add the, the first aliquot, I'll just use mobile phase uh, to rinse out the vial a couple of times and also to rinse down the sides of the column above where the surface of the stationary phase is. Um, and then uh, when you're done with that, well, I'll wait until we get there since I'm still rinsing the vial. Usually, uh, one transfer with your slightly more polar uh, solution and then a couple, two, one or two rinses um, with your mobile phase is enough to get pretty much quantitative transfer. After you're done with that, you'll want to um, apply a little bit of pressure to the top of the column just to get that um, buffer zone um, loaded all onto the column so that your material is completely um, embedded onto the stationary phase. You don't want to push it down below the surface of the silica, though, um, and to, to dry out the silica because then you can have uh, issues with your separation. But um, once it's at the surface of the silica, um, I add another layer of sand. Um, this, the amount of sand you add here doesn't really matter. I usually add a, a fair amount and then uh, add more mobile phase to the top. And here you want to do it slowly so that you can rinse down the sand, but also you don't want to uh, disturb the silica layer. So um, you can see when I'm adding it here, the sand moves a little bit at the very top, 
Um, but the silica underneath, um, actually you can't see because it's obscured by the clamp, but the silica underneath was not disturbed at all. And then once you get enough mobile phase above the surface of the silica, you can just add it as fast as you want. So, all right, we've loaded the column. Um, it is uh, draining into a uh, collection tube now. Um, I've shown that I'm gonna be using positive pressure. I use nitrogen. Some people use air. Uh, a lot of my stuff decomposes on silica under air, so I use nitrogen. Um, you'll want to uh, play with the nitrogen pressure a bit so that you can control the rate of your uh, uh, column flow. You don't want it to be too fast, otherwise you'll get poorer separation and it can be difficult to collect the fractions in time. Um, but you don't want it to be too slow, otherwise your column will take freaking forever. Uh, so I usually try to aim for between 10 and 30 seconds per fraction. Here is a little bit on the faster side. You'll see it takes about 10 seconds per fraction, um, which is fine. Um, but actually that comes back to bite me a little bit later, as I will point out. Um, so now you'll just collect the fractions. And I think I'm going to speed this part up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so while you're collecting fractions, you'll just want to um, choose the fraction size that is appropriate for uh, what you're doing. If you're isolating hundreds of megs or even grams of something, uh, you might want to use a bigger column fraction size because you're going to be using a bigger column. Um, once you've collected your fractions, uh, you'll want to spot them on a TLC plate. So um, I did not have it pre-marked, so I'm going to mark it now. Uh, I think that the uh, uh, my material should come out probably starting in like the seventh or eighth fraction, um, just based on uh, the amount of silica that I used and the RF in the solvent system that I used. Um, but you'll see that it actually starts coming out in the fifth fraction. Um, and that I think is because I used a slightly too polar of a mixture to load the column. And also my flow rate was pretty fast. So um, it ended up being a little bit problematic just because I didn't get great separation here, as you'll see. Um, and if that happens, you'll oftentimes just have to run the column again. Um, so it is better to uh, take things slowly and try to uh, um, do it right the first time rather than having to run the column twice, but sometimes it just happens that way. Uh, there was a brief flash of uh, uh, probe TLC that I did, and you can see that there were, uh, I think, five or six spots. And so I'm hoping that I at least get a uh, good separation and get the major spot by itself. Um, once you've got your TLC plate spotted and developed, uh, you will visualize it. Uh, most things, if you have a UV handle, it's really easy to just visualize by UV. Sometimes you'll need to use a specialized stain that we have in every lab. Um, so just figure out what's appropriate for the thing you're trying to isolate and use that visualization, visualization method um, appropriately. So here you'll see um, I did have my product starting to come out in fraction five, and I did not have uh, any separation between uh, the product and one of the impurities. Um, so now I'm just going to respot it to see if it actually started coming out before fraction five. Um, or if I can just collect fractions five through, I think it was 11 or something. Um, and hopefully uh, I don't have any overlap with the impurity that comes out before my product, um, but we'll see. And same thing here, uh, once you've spotted and developed, just visualize it so you can see uh, where your stuff is. Um, in this case, uh, I don't have any spots that are, um, at least when visualizing by UV, that do not have any overlap between the impurities coming out before or after my product. So it looks like um, my product is pure. However, um, it can be deceptive because uh, you can have really low concentrations of things that don't show up by TLC. Um, but are actually still visible by NMR, which ended up being the case in this isolation. 
So I will collect the fractions that have my product, um, but I still got a little bit of impurity um, in those fractions. Uh, and as a result, I had to run the column again. So hopefully you can avoid making the same mistakes as I did. Um, but at the end of the day, um, running a column multiple times is not the end of the world as long as you don't lose too much material um, and you're able to get your uh, product isolated cleanly. So that's all I have. I hope that this was informative. If you have any questions, feel free to follow up and ask me. Okay, bye.